Hi guys, so today we're going to do something new and instead of doing designs that you guys drew, I'm actually going to do designs that you guys have already done. All the time you guys tag me in your nail posts and you guys are so talented and I love seeing all of them and I see so many that I would love to have on my own hands. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me a picture of nails that you've done either on yourself or a client or a set of press-ons, whatever, as long as you did them and they were your design. And then I was going to pick a couple to recreate. So thank you everyone who sent a picture in. I was honestly blown away at the talent. So of course I cannot recreate all of the nails, but I wanna do quite a few honorable mentions because they are all so good. We'll start with the hand-drawn nail art. The anime designs you guys did went crazy. So much talent. And I can't believe some of you were doing them on such tiny nails too, like really tiny miniature paintings. So cool. This Furby design is really funny and also very well done. I feel like every time I have a bunch of submissions, there's always a couple themes throughout. And these ones were strawberries, absolutely to die for. I love all of these nails. I love strawberry things. There were a couple sculpted ice cream nails. When I tell you it took me hours going through these to try to decide which ones to do, it was so hard. I am not exaggerating. So let's get into the first design that I'm gonna do. It is from Sabrina Sculpts and at first glance it's you know like black and white French tips but I love how every single nail is different and I love each pattern design on each nail. For this, I'm going to do acrylic. I haven't worked with acrylic in a while and I don't wanna just like completely lose any progress that I've made with it. So for this first set, I really wanna do my base really well and really work on like my shaping and have just the nails themselves look really nice. You guys know that lately I've been griping about how you actually have to do things like prep properly and how it actually matters and stuff like that. And I feel like that's the same with nail art. If your nail isn't smooth, if it's not the right shape, nail art is just gonna be so much harder. So perfecting like my actual shape and structure and build of the nails, you know, just application, all of it. I really want to work on a little bit more and just sort of like fine tune. I feel like nails are one of those things that you never stop getting like better at. There is always progress to be made and I know I have a lot of progress to make. So let's do some acrylic nails with these really fun designs. And you guys know that I think in my last video, or the video before that, I got a bunch of new black and white gel and I really want to use it. So of course this design is perfect. So French tips, here we go. All right, let's get started on my crusty dusty nails. So of course their username is Sabrina Sculpts. So I'm going to assume that these are acrylic. I did just take off my last set, so we're looking rough. So let's prepare for some acrylic. I did already do my cuticle prep but I need to take some length off of these if we're gonna do some acrylic. Much better. And then I'm just going to rough up my nails a little bit with a buffer. Like I said, I did already just take my last set off, but just, you know, a little bit more prep. Then I am wiping with acetone to really just dehydrate. And then I'm going to use my Jello Jello today. That way I can keep these nails afterwards, of course. Any sets that I recreate from you guys, I really do like to be able to keep intact. So to do this, I've been doing my Jello Jello a little bit differently and I've been able to keep my nails on for quite a while. So I dehydrated my nails and now I'm going to prime them using Young Nails Protein Bond. And then to apply my Jello Jello, I'm using a smaller brush because I'm only going to be putting it on the center and leaving a border around it. That way everything else can adhere correctly. And as long as those edges are sealed down correctly, you should be able to keep your nails on for a while. It does take a little bit of a learning curve to sort of like get down how close to the edge of your nail is best for your nails and like how you put them on but I've found using a smaller brush definitely does help a lot and I do use a decently thick layer where I do put it on because if you do it too thin what I've kind of found when I've been doing this is it will mostly act like a just regular base coat and it won't really peel off very easily which is 
inconvenient considering that's the whole point of the base coat. <laughs> and then I'm going to cure those. And then I do like to just run some alcohol over the sticky layer. Then we're ready to go. So these are square nails. So I'm gonna use these square tips from Ellen Nailed It and just size everything out. And then I'm going to use my McCart glue. That's probably way too much. These are sculpted tips. So it does usually take me a minute of holding to make sure that they are on good and tight. And these are a little bit long compared to the picture. So we're gonna cut them down just a little. We're looking good. I feel like we're off to a good start. So normally I would file between my like natural nail and the tip a little bit, but I'm not going to since I do have the Jello Jello on. The Jello Jello can be filed a little bit, but if you start filing it too much, you kind of risk just like having it peel off, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to just work with the tiny little ridge. It's not bad on these ones. I feel like they're as, you know, like flush as they could be. You can just go ahead and give it a little bit of a wipe with some acetone. But again, be careful because we don't want to break down the Jello Jello. But I just want to make sure that everything is good, dehydrated, and ready to go. So for my base color, I'm going to go in with this one from Nail Career Education. I think this base will work. If I start out and it doesn't look like how I'm hoping, then I can switch. But I think that this will be a good color. And I'm pretty much just going to do this over the whole nail since it does look like the French tips are painted on. So I'm going to get some monomer. This is the Secret Nail Affair monomer. And I'm going to start out using my Long Care Pretty Nails and Poochie's Nails collab brush. As much as I always want to just go straight in for using a giant brush, I feel like I should use a smaller one. <laughs> Especially it's been quite a while since I've done some acrylic. And since I did give my nails a little bit of a wipe, I am going to go back in with a little bit, just a tiny bit of primer on that border of my nail so that I can make sure that the acrylic adheres good. All right, let's get going. So you guys are gonna have to give me a little bit of a break today because I'm using my opposite hand. That's like almost my exact skin color, I feel like. And I just feel like it's not what I'm going for right now. So, okay, I got that mostly off. Let me go try to find a different color. Okay, I'm gonna try this one. It is McCart Go To, their cover acrylic. All right, this is definitely a little bit more pink but I'm gonna go with this one. I feel like this pink will still work well with it. These are definitely turning out a little bit thick. That's okay, like I said, it's been a while since I've done some acrylic, so I was bound to uh, make them a little chunky. I'll fix that during filing. I feel like also sculpted square tips are hard to work with because they have like such a dramatic arch that the sides end up really thin. So you have to be careful with like how much you do. Also, I feel like this pink is a little bit bright, but at this point I'm committed. There's nothing I can do about it. So I may end up going over it with like a little bit of a more toned down, like muted color using one of my Korean syrup gels. So that way the pink still comes through, but that way it's just toned down a little bit since those are a little bit more transparent. So I'm just going to finish up the nails and we will get filing and we can get on to the fun design, which I'm super excited to do. Since I did acrylic and I'm gonna be doing a lot of filing, I wanna try out this Kira Sky Dust Collector. Even the cord is purple, so what a nice touch. I've seen people like stick this thing to walls and stuff. So I'm hoping that there will be minimal dust anywhere else today. All right. So you're just supposed to lay it and start it. Let's see how loud it is. I feel the same way about dust collectors as I do the hoods above ovens that you're like supposed to turn on when cooking. I feel like it's just like too much noise and I feel like it overwhelms me a lot, but I feel like I really need to be using this all the time. Cause I went and got my camera cleaned the other day and they said that there was like pieces of lint. <laughs> stuck like behind my sensor or, or mirror or whatever it was that they could not get off. So who knows what that could have been. <laughs> anyway, let's get to filing. Got quite a bit to file down, but I'm gonna show you guys how loud it is. Don't worry, it won't like blow up your ears, but let's see. It says that turn on once for light mode and then two for like heavy suction.
All right, these are so much better. I filed until I could not file anymore. And thankfully they are not super chunky or anything anymore. And I actually really like the shape. So now it's time to get into the nail art. So on the screen, I'm just going to be flipping the picture because it looks like that's their left hand and I'm doing my right. So I'm just going to like stick with the fingers, but that way the picture is a little bit easier to read. And it looks like the first step is to do a white French tip on every single nail, but I am going to just really quick test a couple different of these syrup gels over my nails just to see if I want to change the base color at all. So let's see. Ooh, okay, what do we think? Ooh, it's so hard. I don't know. I'm gonna try another shade just to kind of like tone the pink down a little bit because this pink ended up like cotton candy pink not nudish pink. Okay, so I changed my mind. I think I'm going to use this pink base. It is pretty much the color of the acrylic, so it will just even it out a little bit more. Yay, so smooth and shiny, so let me do the rest. And it is a base, so it will be our base for our nail art, because I want the nail art to be really, really smooth. And this will even out any little imperfections that are there. Also, I feel like it's just like a slightly darker shade, don't you think? And I am just like wiping the sides every time so that we're not getting too thick. I was looking through the rest of the submissions though and I came across a second video from Sabrina Sculpts and I saw that the shape is actually a little bit more of a coffin but just in that first picture it looked like a kind of like tapered square but since I'm doing a little bit of like my own take on your guys' nails you know, they're still the same, but just, you know, a little bit my way. I'm gonna keep the shape square because I feel like this is the best square shape I've ever done in my life and I wanna keep it. Thankfully, the video did show the charm that was on the thumb though, so I don't have to guess on that. And I'm just blabbing on too much at this point, so let's get started on these French tips. Some of you may have remembered that I just got some new black and white gels, which is of course partially why I wanted to do this design. I'm super excited to use these nail art ones. So this was a perfect design for it. I think for the French tip part, I'm gonna use this just like regular gel though and not the nail art gel. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of this out. There we go. And then I'm using a 20 millimeter brush. The longer the brush, honestly, the straighter your lines are gonna be. Small brushes are better for tiny, tiny details, but for lines, you need a long brush. Okay, so those are quite high arches. I'm just gonna start about here, I think. And then those lines go all the way up. All right, not bad. Okay, I worked on it a little bit. Perfect, but I don't want to quite cure it yet because I don't want it like uneven and bumpy when I put the rest on. So I'm gonna just very carefully paint the rest on. I'm trying to do this as evenly as possible because I don't want to do more than one coat because I don't want it to get too thick. Doing it as a coffin was probably <laughs> the good move, which is probably why they did it because Square can get thick really quickly. Perfect. One down, four to go. But you know, this is good practice because my friend is bringing me nails for me to do some French tips on her. I have all of my friends pretty much doing their own nails and they're good at them, but they're not really super confident in designs. And so I tell them, bring me your full cover tips and I can paint the French on. And then I will give the tips back and they can put them on whenever. Because the French part wouldn't be covering, you know, where the gel is going to adhere onto your nail, uh, that's totally possible. And I feel like that'll hopefully make her life a lot easier since they are going to be wedding nails. I don't really do anyone else's nails. I feel like a lot of people may think that I do other people's nails all the time, like friends and family and stuff, but I really only do it for them whenever there's like a special occasion for the most part, like a vacation or wedding or something like that. Yikes. <laughs> this is what happens when I try to talk and do nails at the same time. What kind of French tip is this? Can I salvage it? Let's see. Honestly, shout out to the nail techs that do French tips like all day, every day. This requires so much work 
Like, yes, it's a simple design, but it's not simple to do. I do wish my French tips, like the, it's called the smile line, was up a bit higher or a little bit like more narrow, but my hand just does not want to do it. I spent a really long time on this one trying to do it and just naturally it wants to just do a little bit more of a shorter one. And after spending half an hour doing this finger, I just, you know, decided to just go with it at this high. Last one. All right, all done with the white. Let me cure and we'll start with the black accents. I think for the black accents, I'm gonna finally use my black nail art gel. Okay, let's start with the black on the pointer finger. They have like absolutely perfect dots. So mine need to be perfect too. Why does it do that? Sometimes these nail art gels, they just are like stringy. I probably should be pulling like directly upwards. Okay, so those are my big dots. Okay, now I'm getting it, I feel like. All right, so um, perfect circles have left the chat. It took me a minute to figure out how they got that perfect like size gradient and really it is just the amount of product on your daughter is going to be less every time you do it so the dot's going to be smaller and I wish I would have figured that out when I first started <laughs> but not everyone has a lot of common sense okay I may be lacking a little bit in that department they do seem to fill in little dots and stuff so that's what I'm going to do just to fill in a couple places because I feel like there are a couple places that are a little sparse all right, it's definitely not exact like theirs. Theirs is more of a gradient, but I still really like it. I love the dots, just like the look. I don't know, it's really cool. Like obviously it's a really simple design, but I love it. And next we get to use one of my absolute faves, which is Blooming Gel. So let's get this out. And then of course we're going to only want to do it on the tip. All right, there we are. And then I'm just going to swipe it across. And kind of, you know, let it do its thing. I feel like for it to really spread, you do have to put a good amount of the blooming gel on. So I will clean up those sides afterwards. I may cure it and just file. We'll see. But I am going to come in here and add just a little bit of blooming gel at a couple places because I feel like it didn't really spread the way I was hoping it would. All right, I'm going to just grab a little bit off the floor. That's a little better. Now on to my favorite, the cow spots. I think they're cow spots anyway, or blobs, whatever they're supposed to be. Okay, some polka dots and cow spots. And then the last design are these like little stripes or slashes, almost, almost looks like the spider gel that you like twirl around. I feel like that wasn't quite right. I don't think this is supposed to be zebra. I feel like that's what mine's starting to look like though. That's what David said it was. I showed him this design. He's like, I like the zebra. And I was like, I don't know if that's supposed to be zebra. It kind of just looks like a, almost like it's like wrapped around to me, but he said zebra, so. I don't know. So I ended up more with like abstract type swipes because I could just not get a straight line across the curve. It was just not happening. So it's more like paint strokes in my opinion. Just use like one of my raggedy brushes and just whoosh, quick. And last, now we must do the smile line black and then we can add our charms. They did silver charms in this, but I'm more of a gold person usually. I'll have to see what I have. There's a small chance I have the exact ones that they used, so we'll have to see. If not, we'll just have to take a little look-see through my metal charms. Okay, so I don't have any of the saint symbol or the bear with the rhinestone charms. I always feel like I look at those and I'm like, I definitely have that somewhere and then I don't. I just feel like I have a whole store at this point. So I'm going to, instead of the saint symbol, use this 
heart and I'm gonna stick to what they did and use silver normally I do gold I just feel like I'm like usually like a gold person but we'll use silver today but I need to figure out what I'm gonna use for the big charm I actually don't have a lot of silver charms do a seahorse why did I say seahorse rocking horse wow a bow okay you know what I think I'm just going to do this butterfly also I feel like those are cute and match the vibe so I'm gonna get my rhinestone glue and put a nice glob on there. I love this rhinestone glue. It has made my charms like not fall off at all. They are solid on there. And I like that it's kind of soft because it squeezes in all the crevices. Ooh, look at that cute. Okay, and then for the thumb, I know that they have their charm there, but I might put it at the same placement that I did here. Or should I put there? Oh, let's put it like in the middle. And then now we need to do all of the little, I think these are caviar beads down by the cuticle. I've got to separate them first though, cause there is no way. Okay, and last thing now is putting these on. I should probably do one at a time, play it safe. And last but not least, top coat time. I am lightly top coating over the metal. Normally I wouldn't, but I had a set recently that I had a metal charm on and I kept that set on for a while, like almost two weeks. And by the end of that two weeks, the metal had like tarnished. So I would like to keep it this nice bright silver color. And aside from them not falling off, the beads can also get scratched and stuff. So then they just won't look as nice. I love this cow nail. I think it might be my favorite, of course, or the polka dots. And here we are. I absolutely love these. I feel like something I really appreciate about a lot of people is they have a really good eye for like composition and like designs that go together. Like each one of these is different, but they all fit very well. And that's not something I'm good at. So that's something I really admire when other people do it really well. And this set goes together so well. So I love how these turned out and I'm excited to get onto the next set. So let's see what it's gonna be. Another theme that I didn't mention earlier that was also here was mushroom nails, which I am also super into right now. I have quite a few like mushroom themed items throughout my house's decor. So for my second design, I'm going to do this design by Maria Bello 13. And I was just blown away with this design and I think it's going to be a real challenge. I don't think I could ever come up with something like this on my own. There's just so many different elements and it's so cool and I already know that this set is going to take me a super long time. You guys know I've never done any realistic painting like this so it's going to be quite the task but I'm ready for it. I feel like feel good about it today. I think I can do it so let me just stop blabbing and let's get into it. All right, so since I can, I'll give you guys a little update on these nails from my last video. I've had these nails on for two weeks and two days and they did pretty good. Like they stayed on really well. They're only barely starting to feel like they could start lifting. Like you can kind of see there, like that little corner there. But otherwise, like I feel like if I didn't mess with them, they could last easily another couple days. But the tips themselves definitely did round out a little bit and you know, they look a little beat up from the back, but you guys know that I'm pretty rough on my nails, so not really super surprised. But yeah, two weeks and two days. Doesn't happen very often. Anyway, let's get these off. I did not put these on with Jello Jello, I'm pretty sure, so I think I have to actually remove these the uh, standard way. So let's just get to that so we can get on to our design. I have to actually cut kind of far up because my actual nails are pretty long now. Okay, so I realized I didn't really comment on the dust collector that much earlier. Here's like all the dust 
that came off of doing that and it does clean up very nicely with just like laying that filter on. I would say it's very loud so there is some like fallout still around here because I only have it on the first setting and not the second higher setting because it is so loud that I cannot hear my podcast if I have it on the second setting and I have to have something playing at all times if I'm like not speaking or something like that so I don't have too many thoughts. So it works well but there's still a little bit around. I still have a little bit on my pants and stuff but it works pretty well but it is very very loud. Okay, so to me, these look like acrylic and they are super, super well shaped. They are so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use full cover tips and acrylic and I'm going to put these on with full cover tips and I feel like that's the best way to get all of this glitter looking nice and just stuff like that because glitter is super easy to file into as we all know and I really want this glitter to like pop and be able to like give its full opacity and stuff like that. So we're gonna make custom acrylics. It's been a while since we did this and we have two to make. One that's more of a gold green and then another one that's more of like a lighter jelly green with some glitter in it. Again, I have no idea what they use but this is just what I'm going to do. So let's make the darker green first. All right. These are fairly long, so I do need a bit. That should be plenty, I hope. And then this looks kind of like a green goldish glitter. So I have this glitter from Kiara Sky that is green and it has kind of like, you know, that yellow gold reflect. So I'm gonna put some of that in here. And then I have this chameleon flake green from Nail Team. And I feel like this will give us that like dark green and gold that we're looking for. I also do see a tiny bit of like some like blue-ish reflect in there and I think this is absolutely perfect. It gives all of that. Might end up using some of this later on just for some extra on top, but this is just our base. And then I see a couple bigger glitters in there. So I'm gonna use this glitter from McCart. This is just like some bigger chunkier ones. I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of this, just like the smallest scoop. Then as far as the actual color goes, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of these two pigments in here. This one's definitely dark, but these ones are darker. So I just wanna make sure that we're getting like that like depth with it, but just not too much because we also definitely do not wanna hide any of the glitter. We just wanna give it that little bit of color. So pigments go such a far way. So I'm just gonna use like that much of that one. And then just a tiny bit of that one. And let's mix it up. Okay, let's test it. Okay, it looks pretty good, except I'm thinking it's gonna need to be a little bit darker. We're getting there. Actually, you know what? Built up, I think, will be good. So there's our one for there, except I almost, you know, actually, no, I think I need to add a little bit of actual gold glitter. There we go. There we go, that looks absolutely perfect. There's our darker one. Let's move on to the lighter one. Okay, so we have just some clear. And the glitter in this one looks more of like a iridescent because it has a lot of pink going on in it. So I have this one from Kira Sky again. And this just has all different sizes of glitter. Then I'm gonna put some of this same green glitter in here too because I noticed that there are some like bigger pieces. And then we just have a light green tint to it kind of. So I'm gonna use a bit of this pigment and a tiny bit of a brighter one. And looking at the picture, it looks like there's some like really, like that UV purple looking neon flex in it. So I'm gonna also put some of that. This one's from Ellen Nailed It, some of my favorite, and I love the shift it gives. So I'm gonna put some of that in there and we'll give it a mix and let's give it a test. Okay, and I actually think it's perfect. These will look a little bit brighter once they're like built up a little bit. Perfect, let's get onto the tips now that we have our acrylic ready. These are some long nails, so I'm going to be using the Enil Couture 10XL Square Nails. I don't believe I've used these ones before. They're honestly a little scary even to me. He even has released some longer ones that I do intend to try. I will be cutting these down a little bit because they're a little bit shorter than what we have here, but we gotta size them out. And look at that, oh my gosh. These do have a really high apex, so I think the acrylic will be good to use for these. 
it'll fill in all of that. And because the apex does end up being higher on these nails, a lot of the time they tend to run big in the sizes. Like I'm using an eight for this pointer finger and for my ring finger also. Yes, I did nip myself. Of course I did. Dang, look at those. However, the first thing I am going to do is just cut them down so they're easier to work with. I'm not quite sure how far on each one. I do tend to cut down on my thumb a bit shorter than any of the other nails. I just feel like it makes life more manageable. We'll start here. These are so curved, they don't even really fit through my... I'm gonna just shape the tops of these and the cuticles really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, we're ready to put the nails on. I'm going to just put a quick layer of my Jello Jello base on and I'm just putting it on like this because I have to film after this ASAP. So, unfortunately these nails will be on for a day or so, so they do not need to last weeks. So I am just getting like a little bit closer to the edge than I normally would. That way I can easily pop them off. I feel like these will be pretty ones to keep Anyway, nice little forest nail artwork. Just gonna cure that. Can you guys see? Wait, hold up. There we go. So to put these on, we're gonna use acrylic and that's pretty much just a little bit of like a waiting game. I'm gonna just put some on the underside of this and I'm gonna do it far enough up that it's going to go past this part on my nail and I will fill in the back afterwards. There's no need to do the whole nail right now. I don't think anyway, I feel like doing the whole nail just makes it a lot messier and a bit harder. I am doing some pretty firm beads because we want this to set up kind of as quick as possible. Okay, let's test it. Then of course, once it's on there and like pretty secure, you can just flatten out the back and that's all good on there. So we can just fill in the back now. And here it is, it's a little bit sparse here because this is just so tight on my nail. It's still adhered with the acrylic, it's just like pushed any of the pieces towards the center. So I may end up just going over that little part with acrylic so that the color's there. But for the most part, we have a nice, perfectly smooth acrylic-ish nail. And let's do the others. So we have also the middle one to do with the same acrylic. We are on our darker acrylic now. I got these on. I really love this darker green color and all the different reflex in it. It really does remind me of like forest vibes, which is of course what we're trying to give. This on my nail, by the way, is like a grown out splinter bruise. Here are our bases, so pretty. I'm gonna let these finish setting up and I'm just going to just file down a little bit. I'm gonna skip all of that because I feel like y'all don't need to see any more filing today. And we'll get to the nail art, which I'm super excited for. These mushrooms are so cute, but the more I look at them now, the more they're looking real 3D, really realistic. So I don't know, we'll see. All done filing and getting everything cleaned up and we are ready to roll. I think I'm going to start on the middle nail with the big flower. So let's get a little palette out ready. My white nail art gel, black one. Then I have some like various different reds I'm gonna try to use. I think that I'm going to do a lot of the nail art with some jelly colors because there's a ton of dimension in these mushrooms and I don't wanna lose that. So I think that for the most part, I'm gonna try to use like jellies and stuff over white and I feel like that will help dimension a ton because I can layer and stuff like that. So to match the red, I'm gonna use the same jelly on that. A bit of green just for the eye. I, just, I feel like I have to just show you guys. I'm trying to put away my phone more when I'm filming because for some reason, no one wants to talk to me all day and then I start filming and the second I sit down, my phone starts going off. So I kind of just like putting it away for right now or I'm trying to. Also that way I don't get distracted. I don't end up checking any emails or whatever. I can just sit down and film. So instead of having to open my phone to look at my <laughs> reference, I just printed it out and I have it taped out in front of me. That way I can just look at it back and forth constantly. I don't have to worry about my phone dying, I'm trying to look at it. I don't have to like go back and forth. Much easier this way. Okay, so starting out with the white, we have to do the flower. So I just am going to do this in white 
and then go over with color and the outline in black. Okay, I feel like this is an all right outline. Having to work on a curved surface is something that I think I'm struggling the most with nail art. Cause I feel like flat, sure, but then once you add like the curved element, it's really hard. So I'm gonna cure that and I'll just be curing over here constantly. <laughs> And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and try to sketch out the eye and where I'm gonna put that. Okay, that was too small. Okay, good on the eye outline. Now that I know where the eye is gonna go, I'm gonna just fill in the color outside of it and then I will outline everything after that. I feel like doing the outline last will just make sure it's crisp. And I don't really wanna spend time today doing like an outline before and after. Okay, all filled in. And back to the black outline now to do the petals. Okay, kind of finishing up the outline. I'm doing the eyelashes now, trying to do very delicate strokes. Okay, I think that's all right. Okay, onto the green of the eye. My proportions are definitely a little bit off, unfortunately. I feel like that's good though. And then we need a dot of black. And for the finishing touch on the actual eye part we need the smallest little dot of white and then for the little spots on the petals i'm gonna try going in with a yellow jelly because you know yellow and red make orange so we'll see if these show up and they definitely do not let me go get something a little more opaque hopefully this will work I feel like that color just wasn't quite right either. So now I'm going over with the orange jelly just over those ones so that they mesh a little bit better. And it definitely is better. And then I'm going over the green with a little bit of a brighter green because I feel like it just was not popping the way I was hoping it would. And that's so much better. I feel like it just, you couldn't see it as much. This will be happening a lot during this uh, video where I just have to go back and just touch up a million little things because it's a process. And lastly, we have two of the stars to do. Start off there and try not to get my other nails in it. Here. Okay, just kidding, try number two. And all of these are matte, so I'm gonna put a matte top coat over. Those little stars took me way too long. I would just like to know when it's my turn to get good at them because for some reason, it's just one of those things that seem really simple that I cannot get down. Here's how it would look shiny, love it. And let's make it matte now. Okay, ready? Oh, I love it. So cute. Let's do the easy nail now and do the pinky. So originally I thought that the flowers on the pinky were drawn on, but at closer inspection, I think that they are these. I do only have white ones, so I am going to have to color them red, but that's okay because then they will match the red everywhere else perfectly. I think that they're these like itty bitty teeny tiny ones. These might be kind of hard to see. My apologies. I'm just gonna try to get them red. And then so they don't cure stuck, I'm gonna transfer these to a little piece of plastic and we'll cure them. And they should pretty much pop off no problem. Okay, you know what, those don't look good. So I need to figure something else out because those just like don't look good. And I feel like this set is so nice. I don't wanna do it any injustice. Okay, I shockingly have found the perfect solution for this. Look at these little molds. They are so tiny and they're actually really shallow. Can you see? So we can make some of the red flowers and they will look good. I'm not sure they are like very shallow. So I think I might just make them with gel polish because I don't know how much like clay molding gel would really fit in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna try one. I'm gonna pat it down so that we don't get any air bubbles and we'll cure it now. Okay, let's see if it'll come out nicely. Oh, it will! Yay, problem solved. We can just make them. So we got one. That should be plenty. 
absolutely perfect. These look way better than the ones I was painting. I think I'm just going to lay the flowers into the matte top coat. They're not very thick. I don't think they'll need a ton of strength to hold them on. And it seems like they kind of go in a zigzag. I did do a couple little variety of the flowers just to change it up a little bit. And cure that. Then the flowers are shiny and we need those little gold balls in the center. So got the little gold balls and I'm just going to top coat each one shiny and stick the gold ball in. Okay, that looks so cute. Now it is finally time to get to the drawing of the mushrooms. I am so nervous. I feel like there's quite a bit we're gonna have to do. Me literally just like taking out my piece of paper. Okay. I realized I can like literally just point since I printed this out. I feel like we need to make some sort of like gel to put in here, almost like it's like a little river or a little divot. We need some gold around it. Also, you know, the mushrooms like coming out of it. It looks like, you know, like maybe a green jelly I could use here and like here to make it like show it's like growing in. Maria, you make these so smooth, but also 3D at the same time. Like they look perfectly smooth. Crazy. So I think I'm gonna end up probably like mixing that one like chameleon flake to make this center part will have a gold glitter and the mushrooms. I'm not quite sure what to do first. Probably the mushrooms, maybe? So layered. Yeah, we'll do the mushrooms first, okay. I have this jelly black that I got recently that I think will be good for shading, opposed to like having to a custom, you know, like mix. Just a tiny bit of that, probably don't need much. Might even need to dilute it a little bit more. Then of course the gold, probably a little bit of the yellow again for shading. Then I pulled just like a nude color out maybe for like the stem, we'll see. I just feel like these syrup gels are perfect for this type of art, especially since these really look 3D. Maybe not like 3D, like it's popping out, but you know, it looks so dimensional. And then of course my same black and white gels. So I'm gonna start by just putting a base coat over so that when we are doing the nail art, everything goes on smooth. I made that mistake with the middle flower nail. I forgot to do this and it definitely made it more difficult. A base coat really does help just smooth everything over. The mushrooms are definitely the most important part. So I'm gonna start on those. And again, I'm gonna start with just a white to block everything out. That may be a tad big, but for me, I'm not sure if I can do it quite that tiny. So we might just have to make the mushroom a tad bit bigger. But there's the first one. I think I'm just going to cure that. Now we will block out the second one. Okay, alrighty. I feel like our mushrooms are blocked out now. So I'm gonna just solidify where the white is and we can get to coloring. I think that with my like little nude color here, I'm going to try to just kind of like mark out where some of the like color transitions and stuff are gonna be. Just enough so that I can at least see, have some sort of guide. I'm gonna start with this bottom one cause this seems a little bit easier. It's mostly red with a little bit of that orange. And I am not going to cure that before I pick up the orange. That way I can try to blend them together. I'm gonna put a little bit more red up here to darken it. And then I think I'm gonna try to just pick up like the teeniest, tiniest dot of the black shading gel and put it up at the top here to try to start shading a little bit. And I did not cure the red. And then to lighten up this bottom, a little bit of yellow. I feel like this nude color isn't quite right for the stem, but I don't want anything like super opaque. So I think I'm just gonna try to mix a tiny bit of yellow in there. I feel like that looks a little bit more like it. Let's see. Yes, okay. I might have to build it up a little bit, but that's definitely much better. This is the part where I feel like where it's gonna get really difficult shading. I haven't done much nail art in like this style of art where it's more realistic opposed to more like cartoony like that. I feel like I really like this. It's a lot less almost like set in stone. Like if you change it a little bit, it's still gonna look like it opposed to sometimes, you know, like cartoons and stuff like that. If you change it a little bit, it no longer looks like it. Then, okay, I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of black a little bit of the orange to shade. I feel like the black was too cool toned. Okay, 
there is the one mushroom for the most part i'm gonna add like more shading once we've done like almost i'm just gonna call it like a little you know like a river in between but we have to do the other one which i'm really scared about because this one seems a lot harder i actually think we're gonna start out with some yellow Okay, I've just been spending a ton of time doing some shading. They got kind of thick just because I've been going back and forth a little bit, just trying to get like the shading right and the color. So here's what I have and I do really like it. I feel like it's kind of as good as it's gonna get right now. I want to do the little river and kind of like blend these in and then I can do the shadows and stuff because I think that's gonna actually really help the mushrooms like pop and like show almost like direction. So I think for the little river part, I'm gonna use a green jelly to just go over everything. I think I'm gonna use this green jelly and then I might put some more glitter over it. So we're gonna go from like here down. Okay, I think that's good. Let's open up the glitter. It's this same like chameleon glitter. I'm gonna just use like the little bits off the top so that it doesn't get too crazy. I think a little bit is over this, if it'll stick. And then a little bit over this stem. I think I did make the stems a little bit too long, but that's okay, honestly, I can just shorten them with the glitter like this. And I am saying glitter, but these are almost more like little flakes. You could rub them on to create a little bit more of like a smoother surface, but they can be used however. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna set this all down. And now let's do the gold. I'm like dabbing it down instead of pulling it so that it looks a little bit more organic. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. I only just saw it on TikTok the other day, but apparently there's this thing called Game of Shrooms every year where different artists create mushroom art in any way, shape, or form that they do. And anyone can participate. And basically it's like a little treasure hunt where artists will hide their mushroom art somewhere in their like local community. And then on that day, people go out and try to find it given like the clues that the artist gives and you know, like whatever information they put on the website. And I was thinking about doing it, not this set of course, but like an original design mushroom set. I was thinking of creating one and hiding it somewhere here in Nashville. What do you guys think about that? If any of you live in Nashville, would you go try to find it? I felt like that would be fun to just like hand paint a set of nails. I know I've had questions about making press-ons before, that's just not something I can really do, but I felt like it would be a fun little special occasion to do that for. Should I do that? Have you ever participated before? Let me know. I felt like it was a really interesting thing. It seems really fun. Anyone who knows about it can go try to find stuff or, you know, like participate and sign up. So I thought that was so cool. I think I need to add a little bit of like this green to these, I kind of forgot to do that. Alrighty, I'm almost done. Now I'm going to add a couple little itty bitty kind of like black shadows. There's like a whole little shadow around this mushroom-ish. Okay, we are almost done. The absolute last thing we have to do is the spots on the mushrooms. Okay, I messed it up. And finally, it's time for our matte top coat. I'm so excited to see this. Wow, here it is. I absolutely love. I'm so proud of myself for this mushroom in particular. I feel like it looks so good. I think it's the most realistic drawing I've literally ever done. 
So I feel like that's super cool. Now for this nail, I am just going to go ahead and do it off camera because David just came in and told me that this video is super long already. So I will be right back with this finished nail. And here they are. So you may notice that I did go back and add a couple of glitters on top of this. When I'm looking at the picture, there's just like bigger glitters that I felt like I could see and I felt like it needed a little bit of something there. I just felt like it wasn't popping as much as it was in theirs. I also went ahead and just did the thumb. On theirs, it looks like they left the thumb plain. So I, for the most part, just put a top coat on, but I just put those extra flowers that I had made earlier on there just to add a little something to it. But if you notice, we have one thing left to do and that is to put the butterfly on. And I may actually have the exact butterfly. Okay, not exact. That one, what about, ah. what about this one? No. Okay, not exact, but they are very similar. I think this one maybe matches the best. What do you guys think? Or this one? I think this one. So just charm glue. There we are, I'm gonna cure that really quick. And here we are, we are done with this set. Absolutely love. And I'm super proud of myself for the mushrooms. I spent a lot of time on it and I feel like it shows. So I'm so happy with how these turned out for the first episode of recreating your guys' nails. I was so scared about doing your guys' designs a disservice, but I'm so happy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys liked this kind of like branch off theme off of subscribers draw my nails. Let me know how you like it. Make sure to give it a like if you do. So I know to make more of these, I would absolutely love to make more of this series if you guys also like it. I'm super happy with how the nails turned out. I love them and obviously you guys saw what a journey it was. So before anyone else gets the chance to say it, I'm just going to say I am an idiot. I did not necessarily go and look at everyone's profile when I was picking out these designs. I kind of just saw it, screenshotted it, and you know, did it. And obviously I was struggling a little bit with like the depth and the dimension. And quite literally just now I went on her page and she had a whole tutorial on how to do this. Yep, just soak it all in. It was 3D, which honestly makes the design even more impressive, but obviously makes me very dumb because I did not go look at that, which in the future, now I will. But you know what? Just doing it from just the picture alone, I feel like was in the spirit of Draw My Nails. So that'll be my excuse for this video. Thank you again to everyone who sent me a design. I love seeing them. Continue to tag me in like your own nail art and stuff. You know, like if you want to, you don't have to want to do what you want also yes background is back at a blank slate so i'll figure that out at some point i feel like i'm just rambling now thank you so much for watching and i will hopefully see you next time bye